nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And the engine's light, and you start feeling all the vibrations, and you can hear the noise, and you just feel yourself starting to move, and then it's like, okay, now I'm moving, and now I'm moving really, really fast, and yes, I can tell I'm going into space. It is so exciting, and after eight and a half minutes, when all the engines cut off, eight and a half minutes, that's how long it takes to get to space, you're floating. It's quiet, and you're floating, and you're in space. And Dragon SpaceX, we see the view. Thank you, looks amazing. Japan, we don't have any spacecraft. We rely on the international friendship cooperation. My first flight was American Space Shuttle. Second one is uh, Russian Soyuz. And the third one is American company, you know, private company, SpaceX. Welcome to the ISS. We can't wait to have you on board. It's kind of rare to, uh, for astronauts to fly three different vehicles. Only two other astronauts before me accomplished that, but I was the first one to come back to Earth on three different uh, landing methods. One on the runway, the space shuttle. Second one is onto the soil, that's the Soyuz. And the third one is back to Earth on ocean, splashdown. So uh, three different landing methods was the first one. So the Guinness World Records certified me on those two categories. And all three missions, the destination is the International Space Station, where 15 countries working together for peaceful cause, science. And finally, Suichi Noguchi bringing up the rear. Four new members bringing the total Expedition 64 crew to a total of seven. I was born and raised in Japan. When I grew up and uh, up to high school, there's no Japanese astronaut whatsoever, no human space program. But obviously I was watching all those movies, space movies, Star Wars, Star Trek, you name it, and Japanese anime featuring uh, space uh, flight. So I always wanted to be an astronaut. When I was a university student, Japanese space agency started to recruit Japanese astronaut. And uh, when I was 30 years old, I applied to the astronaut candidate program. And out of 572 applicants, I was fortunate enough to be selected and sent to Houston, Texas. When I got selected, that was, uh, it's more of a, of a shock <laughs> than a joy, because uh, yeah, I didn't think I was selected. There is just so few. Uh, Japanese uh, who are able to fly in space at that time. Moving from Japan to United States is definitely huge, remarkable. <laughs> but the good thing was you know, the people here, including NASA and the people in the neighborhood are very kind, shows uh, quite a hospitality to our family. Of course, the cultural difference is, is large. I feel very comfortable and I felt uh, life here is much more easygoing than in Tokyo. Three, two, two one. Happy, Happy New Year! My first encounter with Soichi probably was the late 90s. My husband and Soichi actually flew together on STS-114, and so I've known him ever since that shuttle flight when they flew together. My first space flight was 2005, STS-114. They call it the return to flight because it's the first flight after the Columbia accident in the February of 2003. We lost the seven souls. We were devastated. Our mission was construction mission onto the space station. That was my first trip to, to International Space Station. I did three spacewalks, and each of them are very successful. Spacewalk is awesome. <laughs> you open the door, you go out in the vacuum, and there's nothing between you and Earth. I'm an astronaut for the last 26 years. The toughest thing on this job is separation from family. When I was in space station, it's quite a huge separation. But even on the ground, when I trained for the Soyuz spacecraft, I was in Russia for four years. 
and the family stays in Houston, they're doing their things, and the kids are at the school. So the life is tough. And one thing I try to maintain is a good contact with my wife and the daughters. We have technology, phones, emails, and the video chat, and I try to use whatever the, the best method to make sure I'm in sync with the family. When I first became an astronaut, I learned a great deal from the veteran astronaut around the astronaut office. This is probably the most beautiful thing at NASA that, you know, the inherit uh, shared knowledge and experience to younger generation. American astronaut, they help me regardless of the, the nationality. You know, we have Japanese, Europeans, and we have Russian cosmonauts here, but uh, all the veteran astronauts are very eager to share knowledge and experience. I felt very fortunate to be able to fly with him on the Crew Dragon with Crew One. It was the first operational flight, which means our crew was going to go to the space station and stay for six months, just like we do with the Soyuz flights. Our crew called him the master. That was our nickname for him because he is such a talented person. He is so smart technically. He is so smart operationally. But on the flip side of that, he is so funny because it'll be quiet and then he'll just come out with a one-liner and we're like, wait, what did he just say? That was absolutely hilarious. And he's doing all these one-liners in English, which is, of course, it's not his first language, but being able to operate so well in all the cultures that we deal with, he's just a master at everything he does. On the space station, it is interesting because each morning when you wake up, the ground has uplinked your schedule to you of what you're going to do for the day. And so Suichi, of course, because he was there, he did a lot of the Japanese experiments. Sometimes we would just assist him in what he was needing to do, but his main program was doing what Japan needed him to do at the time. But that being said, every night, it was very important for the entire crew to get together for dinner. Having a family dinner at night is a really neat, special thing, and it's how we stayed integrated as a crew. Talk about the family, we're watching TV, <laughs> and I talk about the news on the ground, and usually by 9 p.m. or 10, we adjourn and yeah, have free time. You never get bored. Astronaut, cosmonaut, you name it, we are professional group. So we take care of each other and we respect each other. I take a huge pride that I'm an Asian astronaut. Asian astronaut, we are about 30 Asian astronauts around and uh, most of them are much younger than I am. I visit them and talk to them and uh, share the uh, experience and hopefully the, all the young kids around Asia, Asian Pacific region, can dream of becoming national and they pursue their dreams.